What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and today I'm going to be comparing the iPhone 6S Plus to the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 and its brother, the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. These are the most premium handsets, the most powerful on the market today, and I thought it'd only be fair to compare them and see which one truly is the greatest based on the features, the specs, the overall usability, and a lot of the unique things one can do that another can. So with this video, my purpose is to leave you guys with a good idea about which phone is better suited for you and why. I'm going to be giving you the full scoop on all of these devices and they really are great phones, but how do they compete? Now, I want to mention that I am grouping the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus together in most areas because they're pretty much the same phone. They share internals. The only difference is the display. And I'll get to that in just a second, but I want to give you guys a clean idea about which phone is better. I'm going to try and keep my opinion out of it. I know we all share our own. So when it comes to usability, the iPhone 6S Plus is the widest phone of them all while maintaining the smallest display. It's a bit difficult to use with one hand. Even reachability doesn't help that much. However, Apple did improve the texture of the outside shell, so it's a little grippier, although I'd be scared to use it without a case. Now, the S6 Edge Plus with that dual edge display gives you something to grab onto, although it's still slippery. The Note 5, however, is the most comfortable phone here. That curved back fits in the palm of your hand very well, allowing you to use a screen with one hand very easily, especially when you consider those software features like picture in picture and multitasking, and you can actually scale the entire display down to the hand at which you're using. So it can be very convenient to use with one hand. Comfort wise, the Note 5 takes the cake here. Now Samsung really did step up the design. When it comes to clean looks though, the iPhone 6S Plus has less logos and no more FCC labels branded on the back, but Samsung really has come a long way. The last Note had a lot of plastic and fake leather on it, which gave it a cheapish look and is definitely looking so much more premium now. Now between the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus, there's not much that's different, but of course the design overall is very similar besides the displays. When it comes to overall size though, the iPhone 6S Plus is the largest and heaviest phone. The Note 5, however, manages to pack a larger display while keeping a smaller form factor. But make no mistake, all of these phones are absolutely premium. They all look great, and the size difference between them is negligible at most. It just makes the smaller Android phones a little bit more comfortable to hold. Now, whether you're coming from Samsung to iPhone or vice versa, the button orientation is very similar, very familiar on both. Now, when it comes to materials, both are using extremely durable materials. Corning Gorilla Glass 4, on the Samsung's and the new dual ion exchange glass on the iPhone 6S Plus. Now, how's the durability? Well, it's top notch. There's a new shell on the iPhone 6S Plus as well, making it bend resistant, dent resistant. So it's definitely gonna be a lot more durable than the 6 Plus was. So of course, the most important aspect of any smartphone is the thing you're gonna be interacting with, and that's the display. I mean, there's a big difference here. We're talking about Super AMOLED and an IPS LCD. OLED displays, which are organic light emitting dye diodes pretty much are considered to be the best displays. It doesn't get better than this. They create the most accurate colors, the most vibrant, juicy colors while remaining very energy efficient and just take a look at the darker colors. Notice how they're actually dark. On the iPhone, they're a little washed out. You know, that's because the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus don't have a backlight. The pixels individually produce light and it's just incredible. Just take a look at the massive difference here. I was actually shocked. I mean, colors are more vibrant, they're richer. The dark colors are extremely dark on the Note 5, and I want Apple to move forward with this. They put an OLED display on the Apple Watch. Why can't we have one on the iPhone? And without a shadow of a doubt, I can say the Galaxy Note 5 has the superior display here. It's a lot sharper. The colors are so much better and it's slightly larger while the phone remaining smaller. Now when it comes to unique screen technology, you have 3D touch on the 6S Plus. You have that built-in stylus for extreme productivity on the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. And the S6 Edge Plus offers that dual edge curved display, which looks cool provides some shortcuts with People Edge and App Edge, but beyond acting as a cool nightstand clock, I don't really see that much use for the curved edge display on the S6 Edge Plus. The stylus on the Note 5 and the 3D Touch on the 6S Plus actually makes sense and brings a lot of functionality to your device. 
Now the S stylus is really cool. Need to jot down some notes real quick. Need to accurately do some things on a very small spreadsheet. It really makes sense. 3D Touch also is very early in its stages of development, but it pretty much allows you to shortcut into certain areas of applications. There's a lot of developers implementing it into their apps, bringing you extra functionality, and it's gonna be used a lot for gaming as well. Both of those technologies are great. The S6 Edge though is the one that doesn't really make that much sense. Now when it comes to power, I was a little disappointed to find that Samsung just took the internals of the S6 and S6 Edge and stuffed them into the new Note 5. The only difference is that there's four gigabytes of RAM instead of three. Now, no matter, it's still a very powerful phone, but Apple took the new route and they added completely new internals. So you have 1.8 gigahertz, dual core, 64 bit of course with the new 14 nanometer construction. Some iPhone 6S Pluses are shipping with 16 nanometer construction due to different suppliers. Also, there's two gigabytes of RAM now, and man, is this thing powerful. So I fired up a Geekbench and here are the scores. I was very surprised to find that the iPhone 6S Plus kept up very well and overtook the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus in the single core score. That's considering this thing has half the RAM and the actual Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus have four times the cores of the iPhone 6S Plus. That is very impressive when you consider it this way. So next step, I did a GPU test to get a graphical performance. A lot of us are gonna be using this for gaming, very intensive stuff, so graphical performance is very important. So I did run GFX Bench 3.1 on all of these. The iPhone 6S Plus finished considerably faster and boy was there a difference. I mean, it wasn't as big as the difference between the 6S and Galaxy S6, but it is a considerable difference. In every single test, the iPhone 6S Plus did better, although the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus aren't too far behind. So when it comes to processing power, the iPhone 6S Plus wins in the single core score. Multi-core score goes to the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus. When it comes to gaming, graphics, performance, the iPhone 6S Plus smokes both of these. And when launching games, I noticed that the iPhone 6S Plus was always considerably faster loading them. So wireless, both of these are very similar, both support the newest MIMO standard. However, the iPhone 6S Plus has higher cap for the Wi-Fi. When it comes to LTE, the Note 5 has a new Cat9 LTE chip, which is future-proofed. It's capable of up to 450 megabit download speed over LTE. The iPhone 6S Plus, however, has 23 LTE. LTE bands making a better international phone. The Bluetooth 4.2 is standard on both of these. And after running an HTML5 compatibility score, the Note 5 does have the superior browser, which means you're gonna have a better overall experience browsing with the Note 5. Now, something important to me to consider when buying any phone is the speaker. All of these do unfortunately have the same speaker placement, so it really is gonna interfere while using it for gaming or video if you hold it like this. I also did measure the decibel output of the speaker and the device with the highest output is the Galaxy Note 5. It also does sound the best. It's a very boomy, loud noise, so it fills the room while maintaining great quality. Now I tested the speed of both fingerprint sensors and the iPhone 6s Plus is much more accurate, whereas the Note 5 is just barely faster when it works. I mean, it takes a lot to get an accurate reading. Now the vibration motor on both of these is completely different. The new Taptic engine on the iPhone 6s Plus is quite cool. It's a very very solid reassuring feeling and it's very fast and responsive. I love the haptic feedback on the keyboard on the Note 5 though. And here we are at battery life, an important factor in any smartphone of course. So both of these batteries actually shrunk from their predecessors and both are non-removable. However, the iPhone 6S Plus, you're just going to get a little bit more performance out of it and real world tests have proven that the 6S Plus is slightly better in battery life. Both of these do heat up a lot while charging. However, feature wise, the Galaxy Note 5 will outdo the 6S Plus has wireless fast charging and it can charge from zero to 100 in just two hours. And that blows my mind. So let's talk cameras. The iPhone 6S Plus with the front facing camera finally catches up five megapixels and it now has true tone flash on the front as well. Rear cameras, and that's an interesting story. Both are incredibly good and the iPhone 6S Plus is still behind at 12 megapixels and the aperture isn't as good as well. However, it has extreme capability when it comes to slow motion with higher frames per second at 720 and 1080p resolutions. And I'd like to point out how annoying the camera is on the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus. It protrudes a lot, so if you use your phone on a flat surface, it's gonna rock back and forth a lot. All right, so do consider 
remember that the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus do have the same camera sensor, and for the record, I did use the Note 5. Now, this is automatic. I haven't tweaked anything, the color, the light, nothing. I just took out the camera and started recording, and I noticed that the iPhone 6S Plus had much, much better color reproduction in the actual video footage. I mean, look at that. The Note 5 was overexposed, the colors are a little dry, and the 6S Plus is just juicy, pops to life, and it's strange because the S6 Edge did so much better, but the color in general was a lot better on the iPhone 6S Plus. Now, the one area where the iPhone 6S Plus shined is the video image stabilization. So this is a unique feature Apple added. It differs from the 6 Plus, it's the video stabilization, whereas the Note 5 just has optical image stabilization. You won't see it while recording video. Notice how it's so much more stable while walking. If your hands shake, you'll notice that the video will be so much more stable on the iPhone 6S Plus, especially if you blow it up on a larger screen. I mean, I was very impressed with just how stable it was. Now, when it gets to photos, that's a different story. Both have fantastic photo capabilities, although I wonder why iPhone is still stuck on that format, three to four. It can be annoying because sometimes it's nice to have those widescreen photos. The Galaxy Note 5 has a wider lens in general. The front-facing one as well, it is a wider angle, so you'll capture more. The quality, though, is slightly better on the Note 5 for front-facing. And let's not forget slow motion. The iPhone 6S Plus does it so much better and paired with that video image stabilization, you can really get some nice slow motion shots in 240 frames per second. And let's not forget True Tone Flash on the iPhone 6S Plus. Have flash while taking front-facing photos. And also, live photos, that awesome new feature that brings your photos to life. It takes double the storage, and you can set those photos as your wallpaper, which the Note 5 kinda has, but it's not the same. There's a human touch to the live photos. So the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus actually have a higher base storage, which is awesome, because that 16 gigabytes on the 6S Plus fills up so fast with 4K video, it's unbelievable. And prices vary wildly on the Note 5 and S6 Edge Plus depending on carriers and where you're buying it, but that's generally the rule of thumb right there. So let's talk exclusives. Of course, these devices are all different in their own way. Some have features and exclusives, others don't. Some are better in some ways, worse in others. So take a look at these lists and see what sticks out to you. I mean, what would you want in a phone? Everybody has different criteria for what they want when purchasing a phone. So to me, for example, I like the speakers. I like to have a higher base storage and I like a very, very nice slow motion camera. Take a look at these exclusives and see what sticks out to you, why you would wanna buy one phone over the other. There's no one rule for all. I mean, it really depends on what you need out of a phone. And when it comes to offerings, the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus has the least amount to offer. The Samsung Galaxy Note 5 and iPhone 6S Plus are the two top dogs here. I mean, Samsung really has caught up in terms of materials. The phone feels very premium. Apple has created a very amazing phone. They've improved upon their 6 Plus and all around both of these phones are amazing. I'm very impressed with both companies. Samsung and Apple, they've created amazing products here. So which is the one to buy? Well, it depends. I mean, what do you currently have and what are you looking for? Hopefully with this video, I have shown you at least what you might be looking out for in these smartphones. There's a lot each has to offer feature-wise, you know, unique features that the other smartphone doesn't have. And hopefully with this video, I made that more clear. I know it can be so confusing choosing between phones. I mean, every single one is so good, but they're all marketed differently. They all have different things they can do. And thanks for watching this video, guys. I really do appreciate it. If you could, this was a very difficult video to make. Like this video down below. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think, which phone you're going with and why. And have a great day, guys. Peace.